so that kind of gets into uh, this this last point, uh, where we're all going to pretend that we're Reggie vis a or or any major major upper echelon PR person at Nintendo, um, and we're going to come up with how each of us would pitch ourselves uh, or pitch the Switch uh, to a major third party company of our choosing uh, for a game that they have in development for beyond this year. Uh, give them a pitch to bring it to Switch. Uh, because as we know, this year we know we pretty much can close the book on what third-party games we're getting this year. Um, and this is year one for the Switch. So let's, let's start with Eric. What uh, what company are you targeting? <laughs> I know who you're thinking. Yeah, I, yeah. Just do it. Yeah, and Madden. Okay, yeah. going after Madden. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now you're you're in the boardroom with them, and you know you know that they already are kind of jaded against you because yeah. DA. Right, cause they've had they've had bad success on Nintendo. Well, yeah. how are you gonna? Hey, maybe through their own fault, but whatever. Right. Even more reasons. Right. Pitch them. Exactly. Sell it. Yeah. Sell it to me. I I I'm EA. Sell me. <laughs> Sell me on Switch for next year. Right. If you guys were to bring an actual full, normal created game of Madden to the Nintendo Switch. I mean, if you take a look at some of our other games, we got games that are outpacing the sell the sales of the console itself, which we are working on but, bringing up our console production. But Mr. Nintendo, I can't bring a full version of our game. Your console is not powerful enough. Bull. <laughs> Counterpunch. <laughs> well, that, that's what would come up. They, they mentioned it's not part. We can't give you a non-parity version. Look at what we're doing with FIFA. That's probably the best we can do. Look at Breath of the Wild. That's way more intricate than any of your games. Breath of the Wild's a single player game. You're talking about a multiplayer game here. <laughs> so is Splatoon 2? I feel like you're way more prepared than we are for this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I made up this topic. No, I'm just saying, uh, This is these are the arguments that EA is going to have against... Uh, look, what, look at ARMS. Let's so so fi fi so finish okay I'm sorry okay. Ninten sorry Nintendo you finish your statement. I mean we are working on our console to get their production ramped up to meet demand. You give us a good game, we can promise you it'll sell. So, uh, Mr. Nintendo, we uh. We think there's some potential because FIFA 17, 18, whatever it is this year is coming out. 19? I don't even know. They, I don't even know what they FIFA call for the Switch. No, it's FIFA 18. FIFA, no, it is FIFA 18. Oh, call me FIFA. Okay. So FIFA 18 is coming out. So let's uh, let's hit pause because I don't agree with you that a market is there. I, I'm kind of on the side that thinks you know you brought up. Look, we have a game that's outselling the console. You have a Nintendo game outselling the console. We haven't seen any major third-party successes on your system yet. There was no major third-party successes that were multi-platform games on the Wii U. So we're not ready to fully commit like this. So let's just wait till FIFA, see how FIFA does. If I can help Eric out a little bit here, I have one point that might be... Safe. Sure, man. Should you cut right in? Yeah, go for it. Um... <clears throat> The, the Switch is bringing back a lot of lapsed Nintendo gamers, and what that means is gamers that have been with Nintendo for a long time and uh, have gone away. Now that means they are adult gamers, and most uh, adult gamers out there are looking to play more adult-style games. They don't necessarily want to play Mario. Sure, a lot of people will, and uh, that'll be probably a major attracting point of the console, but... Uh, what about the folks that, yeah, they want Mario, but now they also want something more adult. They don't want the cutesy stuff anymore. They want to play sports when they're watching the game. They want to, after the game, you know, set up a tournament with their friends and beat them on Madden on their Switch, wherever they are. Maybe even during the party or during the commercials. Uh, and uh, I think that's a, a fantastic new opportunity that's presented itself now with the Switch that wasn't there with our previous generations. I also want to point out, too, though, that we basically have free advertisement because you look at soccer players, they're playing they're playing the Switch. You got uh, you got football players playing the Switch. They're posting 
videos from their locker rooms and stuff and the planes and travels. And where have you seen pictures of NFL locker rooms with Switch? Okay, so maybe not NFL. I know FIFA's for sure. <laughs> I know for yeah. soccer for sure. They've been playing. I don't know, and we have FIFA coming to Switch. Yeah, and I'm sure if you have Madden coming to Switch, you're going to have NFL players. I don't know. NFL players play Madden. Yeah, but you got to remember Xbox has a partnership with the NFL for advertising. Whenever you hear about video games in Madden with the NFL, it's always with an Xbox. Well, that's because you don't put anything else out. PlayStation 4 is the most <laughs> high selling platform. Why don't we hear about that? I don't know. That's Except your fault. <laughs> that's not my fault. I don't control Xbox's <laughs> partnership with the NFL. We don't have a partnership with Xbox like that. No, but you have a partnership with the NFL too. You remember who, what what system did Russell Wilson buy his entire offensive line? Xbox Ones. See, if you're going to argue for an NFL game, you should do your history. <laughs> Plus, I happen yes, to know happen yeah. to know you religiously <laughs> followed the NFL. So yeah, yeah. And Russell Wilson played for Wisconsin, <laughs> right? Aren't you a Wisconsin fan? Oh, for <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I, I am done. No, what I'm saying, Mr. Nintendo, and, and Mr. Nintendo number two, over there, <laughs> is you brought up some good points. You know, it's bringing back gamers that might want to play this stuff, but I don't see it in the sales data yet. So I'm not hearing an argument for the taking not? taking the risk. Why, why shouldn't I just wait and see how FIFA does? Because you didn't make a proper FIFA port. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, to be fair, um, I got my dev units late, and we would not have the time to get our engines to run on the system in the first place to get a game out this year. Yeah, but it, that doesn't mean that it can be the only means of measuring whether it's feasible. That's... Uh, well, I mean, our, our, there's other third-party games coming, isn't there? The only thing that you should rely on. Not necessarily third-party sports games that are, you know, correct. I mean, I hate I hate bringing this up because they're a direct competitor. But NBA 2K18 is coming out. I mean, we can even see how that does. There is that, but there is no other NFL game possible because you have the naming and all the other rights for it. So, yep. T to be fair, if we never release an NFL property on Switch, they can release their own NFL property on Switch. Any platform that Madden is not on, they're allowed to have their own. NFL branding game. All right, 2K. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you are 2K. Okay, okay. You're done, done, yeah, done. Yeah. Madden's coming. Yeah, right, Madden's coming. Yeah. Don't go to 2K. Yeah, right. We don't need NFL 2K5 coming back. Yeah. Because right. they're going to release that at 20 bucks on Switch and we're screwed. Yeah, right. Everyone's buying a Switch. Yeah. Well, there so, you go. there's there you your go. argument. There's we're the just, argument. We're going to go pay money to 2K. Well, no, well, <laughs> thank you for giving me my ammunition. <laughs> No, you can bring no. back NFL Blitz to yes. Nintendo consoles exclusively. Oh. Yes. I like Wasn't it. He, does EA own NFL Blitz? I don't remember who owns NFL Blitz. I, no, it was Midway. Midway. It, it was. I don't know who owns yeah. it now. Oh, okay. Well, then NFL Blitz, Blitz rip off. <laughs> they right. did. NFL Street or something? Yeah. yeah, I, thought yeah. They, I thought they made one at yeah. one point. It ended up not being very good. But All right. Argument heard. And here's the thing. I'm, I'm done being Mr. EA. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> no, to, to help you out. Um, I like, obviously, we both want Madden to come really hardcore. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's some things that, that, that weren't brought up that I feel like EA should consider. Um, and that's the fact that the Switch is selling out. And by the end of 2018, we could be talking about a 25 million install base. We could be talking about in less than two years having half of the install base that the PlayStation 4 has. Like that's a crazy number of people for you to for a EA to be like, hey, we don't want, oh, and right. we don't want Madden being served to those and, those people. And the way you said it too, though, is that I really didn't realize and didn't recognize that if they don't have an NFL thing, they could go to Two K and go, hey, yeah. look at our your other sports games are selling. Yeah, bring us a thing. We don't have a we don't have a NFL licensed game. Yeah, they so, could they could yeah. end up. They, I think the the fear there would always be if 2K ended up doing that. I think the, the moment a 2K partnership gets announced for it is the moment that EA says, "Ah, no, 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 I'm real yep. mad." Yep. Because they're they don't want 2K coming back at all with an NFL licensed game. But the only problem is, is 
they can come back with the absolute crappiest version of course, again, they'll give you a Wii Madden again. Yeah, right. Um, but, <laughs> no, I, I think... I, I think that Madden is actually possible next year. Only because I do think that... Because uh, they have EA stated in the past that Frostbite can run on Switch. Uh, that's kind of the biggest point, you know, you didn't know that, but that you could bring up is that EA has already publicly stated that, that the engine Madden runs on can run on Switch. Uh, whether it can run completely, I don't know, but they said it could run. So that's I, I, interesting. You know what else runs on Frostbite? Star <laughs> Wars Battlefront. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's a very interesting prospect, and I do think it sucks because we at this point what EA does on Nintendo platforms is like beating a drum. They're going to release FIFA. It's not going to sell as well as they hope, and they're going to use it as an excuse not to release games, or it's going to sell better, and then they have the reason to bring the full version over next year. They have a reason to finish porting Frostbite over because um, I think right now EA is afraid of commitment to Nintendo because they've been burned. And part, I argue, obviously, that yeah. part of the burn is their own fault. Like, are we you part giving you the... Get, what, you got, you always got to say part because Nintendo oh. has burned all the third parties. Oh, right. Yeah. So, like, they have a lot of logical reason to be like, why would we put 100% effort into something that's not going to sell anyways? Um, that's always a valid argument until Nintendo can prove otherwise. Uh, and they've failed to prove otherwise for a few generations now. So, mm -hmm. beyond their handhelds. Mm-hmm. But again, the handhelds usually don't get full versions of Madden anyway and stuff like that. So, right. Um, all right, 5G, why don't you give a crack at it? Well, I, I didn't have much uh, cooked up here, so I, I'm, I'm just going to kind of shoot from the hip. Yeah. No, oh, that's what I did. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what I'm doing, too, for mine. Just wait till um, you get to me. Oh, God. I, I, I mean, we're kind of shooting for the obvious ones here, but I think that's the point, that we need to be targeting the big folks. So I'm thinking we got to target Call of Duty. So, Call of Duty, uh, not very successful um, on the Vita because it was a crappy version. Now, one thing I think would be very interesting and, uh, and would fit very well um, is uh, because Nintendo is very much a multiplayer platform. It's one of the few platforms left out there that uh, focuses on playing with friends in the same room. A lot of today is one player online. You can only play with your friends uh, if they're in another room with another Xbox hooked up to the internet. Uh, if you can just split off a controller and, and have a, a match of, like, zombies or something in Call of Duty, it'd be an amazing opportunity. And, again, capturing that older audience with uh, a shooter that's not um, squids flowing around, you know, neon-colored ink. Uh, I think there's a, a nice audience there that we as Nintendo don't want to cater to... Um, in our own parties, we don't want to create blood and gore and that kind of stuff, uh, but we're not opposed to appealing to our older audience. I hear you. I hear you. And I, and I gotta say, I mean, Call of Duty did decent sales on Wii back in the day. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I mean, you, you brought up something that scares me, though, <laughs> as, a, as a developer. You mentioned something about you know really cool to, to sit down with a friend and split off the Joy Cons. Um, yep. How the heck am I doing dual stick controls on a single Joy Con? Right, and so uh, what I think is always a key is because the Nintendo platform is portable, it's not able to scale up to the same graphical abilities. We know this; it's a limitation, but at the same time, it has that advantage of the portability. So I, I think in addition to just saying, hey, this game's portable, we should cook up something special uh, about Call of Duty on Switch that you can only have on the Switch. So That's... maybe it's specific modes or, or something like that, a new type of, of gameplay mode that Call of Duty's never had before. So what you're saying is, for me to bring Call of Duty, like the current version for whatever year, to the Switch, I have to specially cater to the Switch. That sounds like a lot of research and R&D and extra money invested into something I don't have to do on any other platform and for something I, I don't know if it's going to sell. This, I would say, hey, Nintendo will help you. Well, oh, I don't oh. know if they would, but I'm just saying, wouldn't that be a nice gesture? Hey, guys, you should bring stuff here and we'll help you. Okay, you throw money on the table. I have no further argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> money will make everything work. <laughs> money so, makes the world go around. 
Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I, I honestly think that there's an audience for Call of Duty. Uh, the thing is, Call of Duty came for two straight years on Wii U. And Wii U failed, sales-wise. But it obviously sold well enough with Black Ops 2 to have, you know, the, the next Call of Duty come out, Ghost or whatever it was, which wasn't even a good Call of Duty game. So I, I think... <laughs> The thing is, is, like, Switch is more popular than that, so, like, there's no reason to be, like, hey, let's just skip the platform that's even more popular. Right. Um, so I, I feel like Call of Duty... And, and the, th the weird thing is, and, and this is something we don't know the exact details of, but it was it was said very openly that Activision was part of the Nintendo Switch development before the system came out. So cool. Like, they were, they were either part of the feedback... Like, they were, they were just part of it in some way, whether it was direct feedback, like Capcom got to give or whatever. They were part of it. So that means that Activision has to have plans for the system beyond Skylanders. They would have to. <laughs> like, like they're all like, oh yeah, we need all this so we can run Skylanders. Like, yeah. no. I think they even just discontinued Skylanders. Like, they're done with it for now. Oh, so it, it's like, okay, so that couldn't have been why you were in on it. Nintendo didn't want you in on it to talk about that game. They wanted you in on it so you'd bring your big games. You know, because you're Activision Blizzard. You have a lot of huge IP. Um... So yeah, I, well, I I feel like of all the conversations we've had so far with EA and Activision, that Activision is probably the most likely to at least give it a shot. Right. That's just because EA is a pain in the ass. Well, EA is a pain in the <laughs> ass, and um, just because there seems to have been better treatment from Activision in the past with right. Wii U and Wii, right. um, but where they actually tried with Call of Duty. Oh yeah. No. Like yeah, the visuals were really dumbed down on Wii, but God, they mastered those controls. It, it was amazing. It was almost as good as mouse and keyboard. It was crazy how good the controls were in Wii. Um, so, I was always torn on which one to go after. Because, again, I'm shooting from the hip with this topic as well. Um, my prepared responses with EA were because I would covered this whole EA fiasco for, like, yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a lot to say about Activision because everything seems to be positive coming from Activision beyond the fact they don't really have a game coming to it this year. Um, the... I thought about arguing for Beyond Good and Evil 2 um, with Ubisoft. And, you know, I feel like that argument's almost too easy to make. Um, just because Ubisoft and Nintendo always work closely together. And there's still the rumors floating out there that Nintendo helped fund the project in the first place. So, uh, just to ensure they have it on their platform. You know, originally the rumors were saying, you know, to have it exclusive, but just... Just to ensure that Nintendo would be in on it, and the fact that even though the beta site for it or whatever that site you can go sign up to, only only had Xbox One, PC, and PlayStation Four listed, they were quick to note that that has nothing to do with the platforms they're going to release it on. So that just means whatever that program is might be specific to those platforms, but they are they have gone out of their way to basically say that we're not saying it's not coming to Switch. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of hints saying that like they're trying to get this thing on Switch anyways. Um, for whatever the reason may be, whether it was paid for or whether uh, Mario and Rabbids is kind of like the, the testing ground to see if that's worth it, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But uh, so instead of going for that one, I'm going to go for go for one that because it's been delayed, I feel like Nintendo needs to target it hard, super hard. I'm talking to Rockstar, and I'm going to mm -hmm. talk to them about bringing Grand Theft Auto Five. And Red Dead Redemption Two over. Oh, yep. Whoa. Uh, so, hey Rockstar, how you doing today? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you traditionally have, don't release games on Nintendo platforms. It's cool. We understand the type of games you make. You wouldn't think of as a game on a Nintendo platform. Lots of violence, lots of blood, lots of serious adult topics. Uh, but you've already made a lot of money off Grand Theft Auto V. It's on every platform out there but Nintendo Switch. It is still, as of today, among the top 10 sellers per month. So, my proposal to you, because the Switch is selling like hotcakes, and because I can guarantee you we will probably have a 20 million install base, bare minimum, by the end of our second fiscal year, um, that you should test the waters and port Grand Theft Auto V over to Nintendo Switch for release next year. And I know it's late to the party. I understand that. But we think there's a big market 
to have this game in a portable form. And I think you're going to see this year with Skyrim that despite that being an older game as well, that it being available in a conveniently portable form while also being able to play on your TV is going to be attractive enough to sell millions of units. So I'm hoping we can prove to you with that game that it's worth the risk. But it's not really a risk for you, is it? Because you've already made all this money off Grand Theft Auto V in the first place. And we have NVIDIA technology that makes it easy to port games from PC. So you already have a PC version. Even if you have to run it on low settings, it will run on Switch. I guarantee it. You properly optimize it, you're going to run. And the thing is, you only have to run it at 720p. You don't have to worry about higher assets. And don't worry if the game's over, you know, over 60 gigabytes or whatever the case may be. We'll make sure you have the carts so you can have a physical version and a digital version. Now, the reason I bring this up is because not only do I think this is a smart idea for Grand Theft Auto, I, I think it's a no-brainer to at least test the waters. I see. I think you're going to see with the results of that that you should seriously consider Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, hold on. I know what you're saying. You're targeting 4K with it. You delayed it because of the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, and you want to maximize the use of those specs. I understand that. But again, think of the arguments I just made for Grand Theft Auto V. Rinse and repeat for Red Dead Redemption 2. And if Grand Theft Auto V does the numbers we think it can do, we think it could be a multi-million unit seller, that means that there's an audience for Red Dead Redemption 2 without even having the original Red Dead on the system. Because guess what? We're thinking Grand Theft Auto V is going to do that without having 1, 2, 3, or 4. So if Grand Theft Auto V pulls that off and pulls in this audience that would like to play these games, but do not have the time to sit in front of their TV to do it anymore, so they don't currently purchase them, but they grew up with Grand Theft Auto 4, they grew up with Red Dead, they grew up with L.A. Noir. They grew up with these games, but now they don't have time to sit in front of a TV. You have a system that's got 20 million plus install base at that point. You know that it's probably going to hit 30 or 40 million within the next few years. At least that's the way our projection. Here's all our numbers. We'll give you all the numbers you need to, to back up the data. <laughs> I, I can't, you know, I'd love to say that we caught up to demand by then, but here's the thing. If we haven't caught up to the demand by then, isn't that a good thing? That we can't make enough units because people just want this thing that bad? Now imagine Grand Theft Auto V. Imagine Red Dead Redemption 2. I know it's not going to look as visually impressive. I understand it might not run at 60 FPS if you're targeting that. I understand that we cannot meet the tech level that you would like, but we all like to make money, right? It's about the money. And I'm not going to sit here today and throw money on the table to you because I think our device and the sales that you're seeing on it speak to itself. And I know Nintendo games only. We haven't had a major third-party game yet. Skyrim's coming, and I'm telling you, you're going to see that thing move 2 to 3 million units in the next year or two. And if that's not enough to convince you, then I, I don't know what to say because you've released Grand Theft Auto V on platforms that you've only moved 2 or 3 million units and you continue to release games on those platforms. You're a multi-platform company. It's time to support every major platform. Do you want to leave hundreds of millions of dollars on the table just because you're unwilling to downgrade your visual quality to be in a portable form? that no one's even going to notice because they're walk looking at it on a 720p 5-inch screen. Wow. And I don't want to hear that Uncle World can't be done. Have you played Breath of the Wild? <laughs> Come on now. Chat, please. Are you Mike, sure you're shooting from the hip? That drop. sounds pretty prepared. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was not prepared at all. That was... Here's the thing. Here, I think this is why it sounds prepared. Here's a little fact I'm going to let people in on. I would say probably 80 to 90% of the videos I make on Nintendo Prime are all shot from the hip. I don't have a script. I don't think about what I'm going to say before I say it. It's just raw. Um, and I realized over time I'm really good at that. And that's kind of why I get away with it. Um, I also know that it means I mumble and I repeat points at times. And I understand that. Um, it's an issue I'm trying to work on. And it wouldn't exist if I just wrote it all down. And you understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> I had to get you back somehow. I know, I know. Um, but that's the thing. I had no idea what I was going to say there before I said it, is basically what I'm saying. The points just started like, oh my god, this makes so much sense. This makes sense here. This makes sense. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Mike, drop the mic. Like, yeah. like it, I'm really good at that. So 
No, I did not rehearse that. I didn't even come up with this topic until like two minutes before we started recording. Uh, so no, I, I, I just feel like, um, you know, beyond the Rockstar thing, just in all seriousness about third party support. Um, I don't know that Nintendo necessarily needs it to be successful this time because as the David Gibson point before, you know, if this ends up being their all in one platform, then all of Nintendo's games are coming to it. And if you combine their 3DS output with their Wii U output together, like, I'm sorry, they they can supply games every single month, no problem. But exactly. it, it's it, it's that if what we think is true, that we're bringing back lapsed gamers, that we're bringing back people that don't have time to sit in front of their TVs anymore, uh, if all of this is true, all these things we think about Switch is true, then it just makes sense to me that third parties eventually just can't keep ignoring that audience. I mean, look at the best-selling games, Breath of the Wild. Are you telling me that ARMS appeals to children? I know it looks silly, but you have you played ARMS? Yeah. That doesn't feel like it. I mean, I understand like, with the motion controls, you can get some kids into it, but, dude, it, it's some pretty serious competition out there. You can get wrecked online. It, it, it probably appeals to kids. That doesn't mean the kids are good at well, it. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not like Mario Kart, where like, a kid could legit be pretty good at Mario right. Kart. It, it's, right. You only need to hit, like, three buttons. Yeah. Okay? One control stick, three buttons, you got it. I mean, it, it, you know, you, you might not have drifting down perfectly or the jump, boot, but you know, whatever. There's a few fine-tuned things, but you'll figure that out. Um, it, Arms has a lot of intricacies to it uh, that that matter. Splatoon 2, even, like, there's a lot of intricacies in Splatoon. Like, Splatoon appeals to children, but from every child I've met that has actually played Splatoon, which is like six of them, all of them have said they just like playing single player because when they go online, they just get destroyed. Uh, and that's because online's full of a bunch of older people that know what they're doing um because it's it again there's a lot of skill at this there's a reason nintendo's pushing this these games as esports because that's the kind of people that they want these games to appeal to are the more serious competitive players um which is weird since for all these years they've tried to push smash bros away from that community um i know they've embraced it lately with smash 4 but uh it's still, it almost felt like it was reluctantly embraced. It's like, okay, people keep playing Melee. Well, let's push Smash 4 so people buy our new game. Um, let's buy into esports. Even though we won't actually, like, this is the one thing Nintendo needs to do. If they, it, For me to understand that Nintendo's serious with esports, by the way, totally off topic, they need to actually, like, fund a prize at a tournament. They, they, they've run all these tournaments, oh, you win a belt, oh, you win a copy of the game. Well, how about a tournament where you have a million dollar grand prize? Nintendo can afford that. Come on. I mean, other companies do that. Huh. So, but, yeah. Like, if they want people to be serious, then Nintendo, you need a pony up to be serious about esports. Unless it's the CSGO tournament. Have you heard that? Oh. The, the people from the people who from last year have yet to be paid. That's sad. Yeah. Valve has so much money. Actually, and there's a lot of other people who have actually participated in tournaments and they've still yet to be paid to that's not just not just last year's i think was a winner and runner up in, the thing is what, what i don't understand and obviously i don't know the intricacies about how this is supposed to be funded like i know there's like some of the csgo stuff that's fan funded for prizes but the thing is is like one if it was fan funded then the money should be there and, and two even if the money's not there say valve blew it on something okay valve on steam Right. Let's be real. Right. They are a billion dollar company. They could pay out the prizes. Right. I know that Gabe Newell like doesn't like to make games anymore. He just likes to sit on piles of cash these days. But uh -huh. uh, I mean, you know, yeah. we're never getting Left 4 Dead 3 or <laughs> or Half Life 3 or anything with a 3 in it. Portal 3. Yeah. It's not happening. They don't make games anymore. They're not a game making company anymore. They are a platform company. Um, which is fine, even though they don't really make the improvements to Steam that need to happen. Mm -hmm. I know off topic, but yeah, it, it kind of frustrates me now. Like, I love Steam, but we're starting to see better ways to do things. And Steam is kind of behind, but they still own so much of the market that these better ways to do things might never become mainstream, and it kind of upsets me. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, uh, like the, the, there's abilities now to, like, trade physical games, or, I'm sorry, digital games with other players, and Steam doesn't really let you do that. Mm hmm um, just, just like, as an example, them, but... or like the fact that their gate is way too open with indie titles, way too open. Yeah. I mean, it is crazy. It's so hard to find good indie games. And I know that there's arguments out there that 
that oh well like, the good games rise to the top and you're like yeah but i'm like you know how much crap you have to wade through before you finally oh, yeah. get that good game yeah. anyways that's just that that's just the steam could it. steam could do a lot better that's relevant if that rainway app comes out it is relevant if rainway app right. because that's the kind of you know that, that that's what you're gonna have to deal with or you know i know obviously you know ea with origin and the thing is origin's actually gotten a lot better uh since launch the but again origin reminds me of what I'm worried about with the Nintendo Switch Online app. Origin's first impression was terrible. Yeah. So the reputation of it today is that it's terrible, even though today Origin is actually not that te- that bad. In fact, they do some things better than Steam, and your computer doesn't recognize that it's a virus anymore, and it doesn't eat up all these resources. <laughs> like, they fixed all the stuff that was basically wrong with it, um, and it doesn't matter that it's good now. Because it's forever going to have that reputation that it sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like it doesn't matter that Steam is slowly becoming kind of crappy, but it doesn't matter because of initial impressions, Steam revived PC gaming. Yeah. Which is probably a little bit of a blessing that uh, they didn't try to put voice chat out on Switch at launch, because overall, the, the launch of the Switch was super successful. It was a great first impression. Oh, but it's missing all these features. Yeah, but they said they'll come later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> just didn't know what. Didn't know what. No <laughs> there, there was no. Uh, what was the red flag? Yeah, it's coming later because it's going to suck. Yeah, right. <laughs> we don't want bad press at launch. The only bad press is that we're missing features. That's okay. You don't want to know yeah, those, those are features. Small actually, red like... fl- those are small red flags. When, hey, when you it... play Breath of the Wild? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but it's on Wii U. I can just play it there. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but better but frame rates on Switch. Come on. <laughs> that everyone seemed to be having at the launch was, you know, the Switch is missing a lot of stuff, but I don't care. Yeah, right. I'm just having fun. Yeah. Snipper Clips is great, and yeah, these Bomberman's are all... not half bad. Granted, yeah. it they're all tiny little red flags, but you come out with the, don't worry, they're coming. But it's going to be crappy. That is one of the most gigantic red flags ever. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my issue is overall, like, I know some people will feel like I don't like like Switch. I love Switch. My issues are more so, I feel like there's something brewing in the background that's wrong. Not just because Nintendo tends to screw things up. <laughs> They don't always like DS. Wait, they didn't really screw things up with DS. To be fair, um, you know, with Wii, after a few years, they just kind of. I, I know some of the market was moving on, but there was things they could have done. I feel like to reinvigorate that market and not just let it pass by them to 360 and PlayStation 3. But I, I think that uh, beyond some of those mistakes and some of the droughts and everything, that Nintendo, there's something weird going on with Switch, and I, I was going to do a separate video on this eventually where think about all the things we don't know about that they're not even acknowledging or even talking about (laughs) like virtual console huge deal a lot of people care about it a lot of people that have stuck with nintendo these years care about it and if it's not going to be there just say it's not going to be there if it is going to be there and say it's going to be there and we're just going to launch it until 2018 or if it is going to be there but you know that it's going to have severe backlash just don't talk about it that's the only reason not to talk about it is because you know once it launches, people aren't going to like it. Yeah. You, you you think it'll make you more money long haul despite the backlash. You know, maybe it's a subscription service, but it's ridiculously priced. And the games are laggy. Only reason. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that, like, like you know, something about what they're doing with it probably isn't going to sound good. And I know that the opposite is, well, they don't want to look at Breath of the Wild. They just don't want to say anything until the, it, it's absolutely ready. Yeah, but they also announced Breath of the Wild in 2014, so... Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they did say something before Breath of the Wild was ready. To be honest, mm-hmm. uh, absolutely. So, so it's kind of like it's kind of like it's okay to like even if they didn't even if they didn't show Breath of the Wild, we knew it existed. They said it existed. Like they didn't then they say no, we're not making a game for Wii U. No, they always said they were making a Zelda game for Wii U. So just saying that you're working on Virtual Console for Switch is enough. But they're not talking about it. They just keep saying, we're not talking about Virtual Console right now. We're not talking about... Which, of course, could mean the bad news is we're not going to have Virtual Console. But just say that. Get it out now while everything is so positive. Don't wait till all the negative stuff hits and then have more negative. 